there's way too much gray in this shot. Everything, even the YouTube plaque is, everything's gray. We need some color, but maybe I get like an orange beanie, maybe. Um, but yeah, <laughs> in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this really interesting geometry nodes animation. We're gonna have some fun with some textures. We're gonna have some fun with some lighting um, and some materials. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both Eevee and Cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural so everything is editable giving you control of how you want your design to look all updates are free upon purchasing so head over to ducky3d.com and check it out all right welcome back this is the uh, scene we're making this also you can get this project file on patreon if you are part of patreon you can check that out in the description if you'd like um but yeah let's just go ahead and get a new scene going and um make this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything out of the scene and we're just going to get a plane. This is kind of how I start all of my geometry nodes animations. But uh, let's go up here, kill that window and we're here. So let's click new. We're going to delete that input and we're going to go here to mesh primitives and we're going to get actually, I'm actually shift A, so it's going to mesh line. So L I N E and mesh line right there and plug that into the geometry. Now we have a mesh line, pretty fun. Uh, you can't really tell too much of what's going on. So we're going to do an instance on points. So shift a instance on points, plug that right there. And we need something to instance. So we're going to go ahead back to mesh primitives and get a, uh, a grid. So now we have our grid. We'll plug that straight into the instance. Here we go. We have this stuff. So let's go ahead and get this offset down a little bit here so we can kind of see these a lot better. Here we go. These are our lines. Now, here's a fun little tricky thing. Arendale on Twitter, if you look up Arendale, he's on Twitter. He helped me with this because I didn't, I was trying to add a solidify modifier. I was trying to add a solidify and it wasn't working. So sometimes you need to go and get a realize instance node. So R-E-A-L, realize instances. And what that's going to allow it to do is kind of see the geometry in a sense and now allow you to add a uh, solidify. Aaron Dale Minch said pretty much um, being able to realize the in instances allows you to work with some other stuff before you realize them. It's just a bunch of crazy geometry node stuff that's not entirely important for this tutorial. Uh, so in the solidify modifier, I'm just going to go ahead and give it some thickness. Probably right around there is really good. And we're also going to add a bevel modifier. So get that bevel and then bring your amount to just whatever your heart desires. And then I'm going to go maybe bring it down. Ooh. That's too much. I'm gonna also gonna give it some segments right there. And we have it. I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn off the bevel for now because it makes your scene really heavy. So let's go back here. We gotta click on the geometry nodes modifier and let's go and play with the offset right here till they're touching, or well, they're not touching, but they're really close together. It's gonna to create that interesting look, just like that. And then now let's go ahead and add more to the count till it looks kind of like a cube. What I did last time, just to make sure it is looking like a cube, was I set up a cube here. I'm gonna get the origin point to be the bottom. So I just set up a cube like this, and then I just rose my count till it was the size, the shape of a cube. I want it to be exactly a cube. Don't really have to, but that's what I wanted to do. So there we go. Now we have this whole thing. Now what we're going to do is start giving it the shape. So we are going to get a delete geometry node and use a brick texture and noise texture together to give you the shape and the animation. So let's first off get an A delete geometry. Shift A, search, delete. And then I'm going to highlight these and hit G to get them out of the way. Let's get a color ramp so we can control the texture. So we'll plug the color into the selection here, get a noise texture. The noise texture's really only purpose is to make the brick texture animate. And what that is, is the 4D right here. So if we plug the noise texture into the color ramp and then we bring this up, um, we do need to add some faces. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click and drag and do 32. Oops, that's 323, we need 32. 
All right, there we go. So now the noise texture is working in our scene. So if we play with this W, that's what's gonna allow us. But you can kind of see the shape of the noise texture and I don't want that. I want it to be very cube-like in a sense. So I opted to use a brick texture. So we'll get this brick texture here and we'll plug the color into the vector. And that's gonna give you, in my opinion, a more interesting techie look. So let's bring the mortar size down and both mortars basically bring this bigger here. Mortar size and smooth, bring it down to zero. And then you can just go ahead and start playing with your scale like this. And then you can go and get your uh, squash to kind of play in the sense, whatever you want. But we have an interesting look now. Um, you can do literally anything. You can play with your offset. All this is really fun. And then if you want to make sure the bevel modifier is working, I'm going to click the little computer button. Yes, the, uh, mod the bevel is working. So now what we can do is view the W animation. You can see it's really cool. We can even bring that uh, size, I mean, the scale up if we want, but it's a pretty bizarre, wacky looking animation. And in my opinion, makes it look very techy and futuristic and sci-fi, whatever. But I'm a big fan of the aesthetic, so that's what I opted to do. Now we can go ahead and start making a scene around this if we want to. Play with that W till I get a good view here. Maybe bring that scale down like this. But there we go. That's doing its thing. We're gonna go to the plane. I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a plane, and scale it really big. Um, oh, way too big. I'm gonna hit Control A and apply the scale. There we go. Let's go back here to layout and start playing with our camera and all of our fun stuff. I hit the period key to go to the middle. So this is our scene. I'm gonna go ahead and get a camera. So shift A, camera, control, alt, zero. That'll snap it to view, but we don't wanna use this particular angle. Click on the camera settings right down here in the outline or click on the camera. Click on the little green camera icon and perspective switch to orthographic. This is just a really cool way to make things look. Really fun, you play with your orthographic scale here to zoom in and out. I'm gonna use cycles to render this, but you can use EV if you'd like. So I'm gonna get my GPU to work here on my viewport samples. I'm gonna do 32 so that my whole scene doesn't lag while I record. And then samples on the render, I'm gonna give it 500. I think that's okay. And I'm gonna turn off denoising. So now that we're ready to add some lights here. So we're here in the scene. I'm gonna go ahead, actually, I'm gonna to go to the material preview and hit the drop down for scene world scene lights just so we can add these lights in without the video lagging out too much. So we're gonna bring this light up here and I'm gonna give myself a good amount of power. And then what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna hit Shift D on this light and bring it down here. And I'm gonna hit RX 180. That's gonna flip it up. And then this particular light, we're gonna make it nice and red and bring it as close to the ground as possible. So we're gonna go right there. And then we're gonna make this one maybe like 500. So now we can kind of see how this looks in cycles. We're looking pretty good. So first let's get a material going for this piece uh, here. So what we need to do is click on the material section, just click new. And I'm just making metallic to get some of the work done. So slide that over to metallic, base color, down here to a mid gray. Let's go back to geometry nodes and we need to go ahead and apply that material. So we're gonna go ahead and hit set material right here and select that material 001 in the scene. So now if we go here to material preview, the material is on our guy, but let's go ahead and make a material. So here in shading, we now are able to see this I'm gonna kill that plane just cause it's too bright. So let's go kill these windows like this, give us some space. So I'm gonna get a color ramp and get a noise texture. And then in this noise texture, make sure in your preferences of the add-ons. So click on add-ons, type in node wrangler. Turn, make sure your node wrangler is on. And so that's so we can hit control T on the noise texture and hit G to move it up. And then on object, plug that there. Factor, plug it here. And the color ramp, plug it into our roughness. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this color ramp in so we can see some stuff happening. Detail, bring it up to 12. Roughness, bring it pretty significantly far up. So now we kind of have a material going on. 
This black portion is the super reflective portion and I don't want it to be that reflective. So we're gonna bring it to maybe here. And then the white, I don't want pure white, we'll bring it down a little bit. Now we have a texture. Let's go ahead and introduce a bump node. We'll get a bump node here. I'm gonna also, I'm gonna bring this color ramp and hit Shift D, plug that into the height, plug the normal into the normal. We're gonna let that load. And we're gonna plug this noise texture into the factor. So now we have a bunch of craziness going on. Here on the gray, we're gonna bring it back to a pure black. And then we're gonna play with our noise texture till it starts eating into our material basically. Right now it's extruding out. So what we're gonna do is bring this black portion back this way and crunch in the white portion. That's gonna eat into our object and then that strength is just too high. So something like this. So now we have a really cool, really interesting material. If we view it here in cycles, that's how it looks. It's really fun. And then you can of course bring that strength down. Just a subtle amount of bump is probably better. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and bring that plane back. And honestly, it won't hurt to put that same material on the plane. There we, there we go. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and uh, finish lighting it. So I'm gonna hit zero to go to the camera view. I'm gonna click this. And then uh, here in that area light, we're gonna make it kind of blue, make it a lot brighter. And let's get in some volume. So here, I'm gonna click on the world bring it down here to black all the way on the, and then here on volume, we'll click none and go here to principled volume. And then here in cycles, we're just gonna go ahead and bring that density, very light amount of density, something like this. And then in the color settings, so I'm gonna click on the camera icon, go here to the bottom to color management, make your look high contrast. So here back here in cycles, Let's go ahead and get that top area light, maybe 500. It's probably too bright, we'll do 300. And then here on this bottom area light, the red one, make it like a thousand to give you a nice amount of a, a really cool look. So there it is, that is how we're looking and this is how it looks in Eevee. Um, on, the on the, ground plane. I'm going to go back here to shading because the ground plane is the ground plane is really distracting. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to click this button, the three, so we make a duplicate. In the ground plane, I'm going to get this this roughness to meet it to be something like this. This white texture, bring it closer. And then um, strength, we're going to make really light strength. And then on the scale, just scale it up significantly higher. And I think we can also make it a good amount darker so that there is more emphasis on this object here. So we'll bring the brightness of this object. That's too much. Bring it right about there. So let's go ahead and render this in cycles and see how it looks. And there we go. That's how it's looking in cycles. Really cool, really crisp. That's no denoising at 500 samples. Uh, what we're gonna do here is now just animate it really quick. So click on this object here and we'll go back to geometry nodes and just give it some simple animation. So let's get this little plus icon right over here, drag it up, and we'll get in a uh, timeline. So what we're gonna do is what's called a boomerang animation, where we do um, animate it one way and then we reverse it. Now, usually it's pretty obvious. So basically on the W, we're gonna animate this way, we're gonna animate it back. Usually it's pretty obvious, but in this case, I found with this particular brick texture, you can't tell it's a boomerang, so we don't have to worry about getting te technical about looping the animation. You just do the, the boomerang. So what we're gonna do is here on the number three, I mean, here on the W, I'm gonna hit I. I'm gonna go to the very end of the timeline and hit I again. I'm gonna click on the noise texture so we can see it. So right at the middle, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, get this W and animate it a little bit, move it, and then I'm gonna hit I again. So now if we press play, it animates. And once we hit to this middle, you, you'll, um, you can't tell that it reverses, it just keeps going. And now you have this really bizarre looking animation. If we view it here in cycles, that's how it's looking. Once you render it, it's gonna be nice and crisp, nice and clean. Um, but that's how you do it. That's how this animation is done, again, 500 samples on the render. You can play with that if you want. 
and you can denoise it if you want. But that is how you create this animation. On my animation, I added a cube in the middle with a wireframe just to add some more pizzazz or more detail to it. So I'm gonna leave that portion up to you. Add some more detail, make this your own, have some fun. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check out real-time materials, that is linked in the description. Uh, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.